Hey guys, Chris here. I'm gonna do an important video today to talk about what really helped me overcome my self-esteem issues, my relationship problems, overcoming anxiety, really being able to be comfortable in myself, grounded in myself, to, to really be able to set healthy boundaries um, and really start to go after what I want in life. And that is on the topic of enmeshment. So I wanna talk about what enmeshment is, how to overcome it, I'm a follow-up video where I talked about a lot of, uh, in terms of pickup artists, in terms of guys who've got problems with women. It, I do believe now that is to do with this topic of enmeshment. And that's where there hasn't been a clear separation with the mother. It could be not a clear separation with a particular parent. Uh, but in this case, say, let's say it's the, the guy to the mother. Um, there's not clear boundaries. Um, there's not really been that healthy separation. There's not really been a a full rejection, as you could say, this sort of separate, you know, you're going off and you're a man now, um, whereas it's still this feeling to, to be a little boy. Um, and then that goes into relationships and then the relationships are, maybe the parent comes in or, you know, I could be in a relationship with a woman and she would somehow feel that, you know, the mother is somehow still in the equation. So that's, that's on, on the surface level, what it is, you can get into a lot of different details, um, a lot of um, loyalty, which is brought in through enmeshment, um, that you know the, the person has to be loyal to the family. Um, there's obviously a lot of guilt as well, which is used, a lot of manipulation, which people aren't doing, you know, family members aren't doing that subconsciously. There's a lot of behavior that I realized in myself, I was doing to other friends and people, which as you start to become aware of, it can be quite shocking but you do start to get to the, the root surface of, of what's, what's been bothering you all your life. There's this feeling of need to always want to satisfy. So as an empath, you, you put the people first, you know, you're putting your parents' needs first um, above your own. So if they're upset, you feel upset, and then you feel this need to, to fix it, to, to include it. So you never really move on, you know, it can stop you even from living a life that you want and starting a family of your own. So perhaps an absent father, emotionally, um, which has led the mother to, to then attach more to the son. So it's kind of in a, way, a weird way, it's like the son um, and mother is like, it's like a relationship. Um, and, and then women can sense this as well in relationships that there's some sort of attachment going on. But this need to sort of over-mother, uh, sorry, over-mother the, the, the boy, the child, and to get all this female attention, to have a mum who will do absolutely anything for you, who will bend over backwards for you, who texts you straight away. You know, it leads you with, with unrealistic expectations going out into the world when you see women who will reject you, who will show the opposite behavior, and that can be quite frustrating. And, and in some instances, guys will be, say, rejected by women or have failed relationships, and then they will go back to their mum or they'll phone their mum. So it's kind of this, this, what has happened is the mother has wanted to attach to the son to, to always be there for her like to meet her needs um, but what this is damaging to the to the guy per se because it's damaging his relationships because he feels maybe guilty to even get in a relationship with another woman on the extreme end and there's loads of things which come this is like anxiety always needing a woman to be there um, it's obviously leads to things like sex addiction porn addiction just commitment issues because the commitment feels very trapped um, you know, to be in a relationship with a woman will only remind you of perhaps a relationship with your mother where it's been, maybe sometimes it can be a bit intrusive, you know, because always wanting to be there, always having to put her first. And one common thing that happens as well is boundaries. Boundaries are ignored. Um, you would perhaps state your boundary like, look, I just want my own space. And then there'll be a justification of, oh, well, you, you know, you, I'm not really invading your space, you know, I just, I'm doing this. And, and then there's an excuse and then you've, you just don't, you give up on boundaries. So the problem is then not having boundaries, which, which need to be stated. It needs to be like, look, this is what I need. If you feel then someone is overcoming into your life, needing help, then you need to say like, look, I, I can only offer so much help. I'll listen to you, but I'm not fixing your problems. So it's having this awareness around the trap that you end up in. Of alcohol, like just this need to always be drink escaping, um, it, it gives you an element of freedom, escaping, um, you know, addictions to, to pornography and things like that. It just sets you into your freedom. You know, there's no guilt um, attached to, you know, you're in, you're in a relationship and it's, it's more freeing. Like you're just, you're just doing your own thing without anyone telling you what to do. 
um, because relationships equal it, that that relationship that is formed with, with the mother is what is replicating out into to everyday life. So you know, and also there's this need to perhaps not trust yourself, and, and maybe the, the the parent is telling you, you know, you, you're not very good at making decisions. You know, I need to do this, and then you're like, okay, and then you allow that person to come into your life, and they're they're kind of helping control you, take you in a certain way. And maybe it is in a way that you're like, I do want to move out of the house. And then, you know, your parent says, well, you, you never get any good house shares. You know, you always argue with people like people out there are weird. You know, you're better off just staying here, better off saving money. And you're like, OK, so it's kind of been this, it's this weird. But once you can see that that's what's happening, you can say like, OK, I can feel what's happening. Um, and then I can I can do what feels right for me. So one of the things with enmeshment is boundaries and having clear boundaries. And this is what makes you feel comfortable. Uh, I've really been able to draw the line where it's something that makes you feel uncomfortable, where you disagree with people um, and, and having that firm line. But what you find sometimes maybe with a parent is you state a boundary and they'll still maybe intrude over it. Um, this involves a lot of patience and being able to keep stating the boundary and avoiding the conflict. And then they'll start to see that they can't quite get their needs met that maybe they start to then become aware of their own controlling behavior. Um, it, can be, it can be challenging, like conflict can be seen as bad, but believe me, it's, um, it's definitely an okay thing, it's a good thing, it's healthy, um, and perhaps the parent sees, yeah, the conflict being about any sort of confrontation. But what you'll probably find is that the parent will perhaps be arguing with you, controlling you, but the second you start doing it the other way around, it's kind of seen as unacceptable. Um, which leaves you feeling quite stuck, quite trapped. So, you know, if any sort of envision and, and privacy, stuff you feel uncomfortable talking about, like finances and, and things you do, it comes down to knowing what you really want and knowing what's best to you. As I've sort of mentioned, it can be seen as, well, you don't know what's best for you. You can't take care of yourself. They'll bring up mistakes from the past that you've made. And then you think, oh, well, maybe I can't look after myself. Tell me what to do. But that has to be as part of the separation. You know, you have to be willing to, to focus on that. And a lot of this stuff is seen, you know, I didn't become aware of it until it did. And then it's like, I, I literally, everything now, I don't feel uncomfortable, I feel uncomfortable talking about, I will say. Um, and then the relationships in the rest of your life start to improve as well. Because one thing I noticed with the relationships and the difficulty of this is when you start to see that, you know, perhaps you're enmeshed with, with your family, your, your, a lot of your relationships are enmeshed. If anything, like all of what you've grown up around, a lot of it is is enmeshment, which, which can be part of the difficult process. But the good thing, particularly if you're into self-improvement, you know, you're just, you're constantly meeting new people, hanging around, but you'll notice that there's some people who, who you're attached to, which can be quite enmeshing. Some of them relationships can be, can be fixed, but some of them, I guess, kind of need to be let go of because they can be quite damaging. Um, you know, you can find maybe guys in your life, for example, with myself who, who were trying to fix me, who were trying to, you know, and I was being a bit too open, vulnerable with, but I didn't really want their advice. But I was ultimately walking into that trap where I was playing the victim and they felt the need to stop me playing the victim by offering me solutions. You know, that's part of enmeshment as well, where someone will tell you their problems and then you ultimately come in with solutions, which a lot of us don't want because we know we can find our own solutions. Sometimes we just want to share and be open. One of my friends in particular, you know, a couple of a couple of friends, like female friends can be quite over mothering and then you sort of start to push back a bit. Certain behaviors you maybe then notice in other people which you have to see in yourself. So I think with one of my friends, I could see that, you know, she always needed help with making decisions, didn't quite trust herself, but then you realize that you're coming in and doing the same thing. Um, and, it's, and it's okay. And I think there was one instance where I would say things like, well, do you want to come to this event? Um, only come if you want to, no pressure. And then they will say no. And then you start to notice that a lot of people have been making decisions and doing things, bending over backwards that they didn't really want to do, which can be, um, which can be quite shocking, you know, and then it brings a lot into yourself. So the thing with, uh, also with, with certain friends, you know, maybe they're late um, a lot and then you talk to them and they say, well, you know, you say, well, you know, I appreciate if you're on time next time because it feels like, you know, my time's valuable and it feels like I'm being disrespected. And they'll they be like, cool. Some people will be like, be like, no, and they get very defensive and always like making excuses. And, and you want to, to make sure that people are actually understanding your needs because it's about you getting what you want. And that's what friendships are about. You don't want to be in friendships where you're not getting your needs met. 
And you want people who, who can disagree with you, right? Who can give you their honest opinion. To, to get people around you who just like you is an element of narcissism, right? Where you're just getting people who agree with everything you say, don't agree, you're in control. Like part of narcissism is control. We, we all have narcissistic dependencies. Um, and that's just because we've brought, been brought into the world as feeling like we are special, we're one of the kind because our parent has probably over cared for us and they've obviously, they've made us out to feel so special and we've equally made them feel special as well. But the damaging thing is when you're in the real world is that is not a mirror, that is not a reflection of, of how life is. You know, for me, maybe it led to bullying. It made me realize that, okay, you know, all women aren't gonna be there for me and, and do all this stuff as well. So, you know, I'm gonna get rejected by women. So, you know, it's a harsh reality. And then you start to see people who maybe might even trigger you, people who are getting validation on Facebook, you know, this might even be you constantly chasing likes, wanting people to like them, wanting to be center of attention. And then the kind of the ego, what is built around you is that that, that is true um, and that everyone does like you, but you start to feel like maybe they don't like you and you can, you can sense that and, and it bothers you, but you kind of block yourself off from that. And in particular, like I talked about with the friends, you know, I'd, I'd hang around with people who, who would be like, you're awesome, you're the stuff, you know, and, and, but in a way they maybe deep down didn't feel that. There might've even been some resentment to me. As I mentioned with, you know, the, the feeling special, everything's great, you know, everything isn't great, everything wasn't perfect. Um, and that can be difficult to have the conversation with, with parents, maybe they don't see that. And that's okay, because as long as you see that, um, and then you'll start to feel better because you'll know deep down that things weren't always perfect. You didn't always feel great. You didn't always feel special. Um, you know, there were problems and, and that's normal in every family, in every situation, you know, it's part of life to, 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 to see things as being perfect uh, and blocking yourself off from, from feedback, for example, is not a part of growing. So what are guys doing that are enmeshed with their mothers? What are some other behaviors that I've not mentioned? Well, they're always looking for female validation. You know, the, the, as long as a female validates them and approves of them, that is love, that is how they love themselves. Um, but there's an over tendency to go more towards that. Um, a lot of their purpose might be more female validation driven. Maybe they live the life that their parent wants them to live. They feel guilty for not. Um, like you said, guilt is used a lot. Um, you know, guilt of maybe not being as loyal, you know, so if you wanna go one way, you wanna live this life and then, you know, this. There's, there's two different ways. Um, and you have to be okay as well loving yourself. And as I mentioned, this over mothering, over pampering um, of, of guys like maybe from their mothers then brings unrealistic expectations in relationships. But equally, you can attract a woman who, who bends over backwards um, to fix that relationship. Um, or sorry, to, to, to do everything that you want. You, but I see that in, in, in maybe women with, with guys now and it's, it's very hard to watch, you know, and then particularly for the last year, it was very triggering, but that was because I was going through that process myself. You know, the, the more the bending over backwards, you know, to have a, um, to have a partner who, who will literally do anything for you, even at the sacrifice of their own needs, which, which you know, and you, you, you equally probably do the same. You're like, I would literally do anything for this woman to the point where it's like you would drop your own plans. Um, so that works in a two way thing. Um, boundaries not being heard as well as, as we've mentioned, you know, I think some of these points I'm going over again, but um, I just want to get it all out. So, you know, the boundaries um, that you're maybe stating a boundary and it's just, it's just never heard. You know, you, you always feel like it's your fault. You're always like, well, this is always my problem. Um, when you express yourself, your needs, it then comes over with, oh, you know, I can never do anything, you know, I can never get it right. And then maybe they even feel guilty. They go, oh, well, I feel bad about myself now. You know, you make me feel like the worst person in the world. And then you come in and go, look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel that way. So then you're apologizing. So you're constantly always in the wrong. So it's like, this is where the, the low self-esteem really does come from. And the judging of men a lot is, is a big one as well, where <clears throat> perhaps the, the mother with the son has, maybe seeing what she doesn't like in other men, like all men are like this, they're, they're liars or they're, um, they're greedy and they're this, and then that, you take that on board and then you, you vow to never be like that guy, but you don't even step into that masculine side of that. You, like maybe it's being good with money or um, 
you know, in, in his sexuality, you know, because you're like, I, I can't be seen as that guy because I won't be validated, I will be a bad person. Um, so that kind of stops your growth. So in terms of relationships, as I spent my whole life, never really been in a relationship, um, or just getting to the point of early stages of, of dating or even just a friend for, and then feeling that rejection, um, really becoming attached to someone and then they don't quite feel the same way or getting into a relationship and either they become physically distant um, or it comes to the point where I feel a bit trapped um, and then ultimately I push them away. So these are the, these are the problems um, that are faced. Um, and for myself, I, I feel there's this thing called trauma bonding, which in a way, because you've not had, um, for example, a, a full rejection from, from the mother, um, you then go into relationships where you're gonna feel the rejection. So, and then that becomes more and more painful to bring your awareness to the fact that you've not really properly been rejected. And that obviously has always brought me into a stronger position but it's left me in, in such frustrating um, with everything, you know, just to frustrate, why is the relationships never really got going? So this thing that I talked about with trauma bonding essentially is where two people meet to, to experience a certain trauma. So it could be for a guy to walk into a relationship where he's gonna feel a real uh, painful rejection and the woman ultimately is attracted to, to a guy to feel a similar like, oh my God, this guy reminds me too much of my dad, so I need to, to reject him and push him away. So that's, that's kind of what happens. So in, in these instances, they, they can be for a good reason in a way that um, you do learn a lot more about yourself and you do allow yourself to feel the feelings that perhaps you've never felt before. Um, or I could just have gone into a similar um, scenario where I replicate the relationship perhaps I have with my mum but then I wouldn't have I would have been in that cycle I wouldn't have really been able to do what I really wanted to do so so these things happen um, it's not it's not for everyone um, everyone lives different paths like I said I see guys who are just sort of with their girlfriends on the phone for them for many hours every night you know they're women you know they're partners are doing everything for them, they've got no sense of purpose, they're just giving up, they're maybe they're watching TV all the time and they watch football and they don't really have much of much of a life. And that's fine, that's not really for me to judge. It's just for you to know that that's not the life that perhaps you want. And you want to really free yourself from this. But for a lot of guys, they're not willing to, to look into this, you know, to look into the fact that maybe their mother or their partner was not, also their parent was not perfect. They um, and then you have to be willing to go into it and tackle and maybe in some ways stand up to them and the conflict because you, you feel this fear of maybe even wanting to stand up to your parent. That's, that's part of the enmeshment where you, you know, the other person always has control over you. And then you have problems with authority, you go into your job, you've got all these other problems. So that's some of the stuff I want to mention. Um, and then to give a great example um, of enmeshment, is um, the, the film Psycho and Norman Bates, who's the serial killer in that, who's a classic example of someone who's enmeshed with his mum, obviously more on the extreme end because he obviously kills someone, uh, with the famous scene where he stabs the woman in the shower. But before, you know, the woman in the shower, before obviously she comes to the motel, um, an actress, and, you know, in a way she kind of becomes quite curious about him and, and he kind of feels a bit of attraction to her. And you can feel, and then when he speaks to his mum in the house, you can hear his mother like, oh, will you tell her to leave? I'm, I'm sick of her, I don't like her. Um, and then he's, he, he comes in and when he's talking to the actress, she's sort of saying, well, you know, you're a bit too close with your mom. And he gets very defensive and he's like, well, a boy's best friend is his mother. And then throughout the film, you start to see, particularly at the end, you start to see he's, ba he's basically his mother's voice is, is inside his head, you know, the guilt, the, you know, and the not wanting to get close with other women and calling other women sluts. And, you know, it's, uh, it's an extreme example, obviously, to the point where he obviously kills someone, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a classic example, you know, and he lives with his mum as well and he looks after her. So, you know, that's, that's a classic example of, of like in a movie of, of what, this can actually do. It can do very psychological damage, um, even though we're not aware of it. And, and, and people can pick this up, and particularly women can see guys who, who are like this. And then when they get into a relationship, it can then cause conflict with with parents and then the mother coming in and wanting to, you know, and then the you know the the the, the guy's partner is kind of fighting off the the mother and 
and it goes a bit nasty, right? Um, but then and in a way, this is then there is a healthy separation from that. So before I get into some of the solutions that you guys can do, um, a great book to check out is called Married to Mum, uh, When Married to Mum. And <laughs> it's a book that I probably read on the tube and stuff like that, which I wouldn't recommend doing uh, because everyone will be giving you funny looks. But it's, it's about enmeshment. Uh, another book, Ken Adams, which is done, I recommend checking him out, um, Silently Seduced. Um, and I've looked around and to be honest, there aren't too many experts that, you know, and I've, I've not really found a guy who's perhaps been through the enmeshment himself and talking about it. I found women who've, who've been through it with their, with their mothers and stuff and they're talking about it. But in terms of a guy, that's why I want to do this video and I want to share with you guys. And if anyone wants to, to contact me and, you know, I offer a 40 minute consultation to, to chat about this. Um, whether you want to do something, I'm working with a couple of guys at the moment. Um, doesn't matter if you want to do the coaching. I just feel like at the moment, I want to just help as many guys as possible and then just have a chat about this. Because most guys aren't willing to do this work. Most guys have literally told me, I was quite forceful for a few guys and they were like, no, I'm not going to, even though they're into self-improvement, which, which is fine. So in terms of the overall solutions to overcoming enmeshment, I, th I would say, first of all, is really about understanding. Um, for yourself not to feel guilty, not to feel responsible um, for not being there for a parent, um, to understand where all the guilt's coming from, to have healthy boundaries and to really look to, to work on that. And understand as well, this is about you going after what you want. I remember there was a lot of resistance for me originally because it's like, well, I don't want to hurt them, so I'll just leave it. And then you realize what, you're gonna leave your own life, you're gonna sacrifice your own life and what you really want to do and what your purpose really is and, and the dreams and the partner you wanna live and having a family of your own. And, and people will do this, like some guys, like I told you, may live with their mum on their own and they're willing to just stay in that situation because they wanna look after her and they feel like it's the right thing to do. But as you go deeper into it with the likes of meditation and things like that, you start to see that it's, it's kind of quite manipulative and, and a lot of this can bring up a lot of anger. So, but, you know, anger against you being trapped for all this time. And that was, that was the reason, but you know, this is just something that people are doing subconsciously. And as I said, be aware of where you're actually doing it in your own life as well and meshing with other people. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, this idea as well with opinions to enmesh with, with opinions to say like, look, we have the same, you know, you can't disagree with me. This is going to be the same. And to only find people who agree with the same things. Um, you know, that's everyone disagrees and that's that's perfectly healthy to, to have different opinions. You know, you can't always be the same and not be conflict. That's part of life. The second one is to really educate yourself on this. So, you know, that don't, you know, there's there's blog posts and there's, you know, there's a few videos on YouTube. Probably not too much information out there, but I'd like to give you a couple of examples of books. There might be just books on boundaries are great. Um, other stuff, maybe on codependent relationships, which is not entirely uh, enmeshment. But it does cover a lot of the same things. Um, so, so do do read up on that, educate yourself. And then finally is to is to get a psychotherapist uh, to do this work, is to get help from someone if you really want to tackle it. I know there's this tendency of like, I'm just gonna do it on my own. But as my psychotherapist pointed out to me, you know, this is the hidden wound. You know, you, you can't see it. Um, you won't be able to see a lot of this behavior. Um, and, and just read a book and do it. I think it's just, it's an ongoing process. You know, I think I've done a lot of sessions with my psychotherapist on it, like maybe like 30 sessions um, and I'm still doing some. So it's not an easy, an, an easy ticket. And sometimes stuff happens and it's like, you, you, you can't see what's happening. And then you're told something which you realize will, will, will help you move to the next level. It's like when we can see stuff, we can best help other people. So, you know, I recommend that finding someone who specializes in enmeshment, you know, if you're a guy, perhaps, you know, obviously I work with a woman, so, you know, anyway, I don't think it really matters. Um, but as I sort of feel now, I would, what I would really have appreciated would be to meet another guy who's obviously gone through the exact same thing as me to, to best help me. So that's what I'm gonna say to you guys, like if you do wanna reach out, um, I've got my email below uh, for a 40 minute consultation on this. If you think this is something you're going through and you want help with and you're like, oh my God, I'm sick of the anxiety and the self-esteem issues and the problems with women and maybe the um, porn addictions and, and you know all this other stuff. And my parents are very intrusive. I don't know what to do. I'm terrible with boundaries. Um, you know, definitely do get in touch because I, I can help you out with that. I've also written a, a blog post as well, like a five-page blog post, 
um, which I've probably covered a lot of stuff I haven't. I do want to bring more videos on this because there is so much juicy detail to mention. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I do comment and let me know what you think. I know it's been quite a long video, um, but it would be good to get your thoughts um, if this resonates and yeah, what your takeaways have been. Thanks.